What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode 172 of Literate Lessons. As always, I'm your host, Carter Noble, joined by our fantastic co-host, Carl Wilkin. What's up, dude? I am getting over being sick. That's what's up. I am in pain. I was about to say, we, we messed ourselves up this week. <laughs> uh, yeah, I am. I, I went to... Uh, Tiff and I have a storage shed where we have all of our stuff from like our apartment and everything that we had. Um, because when we moved, we moved into my grandfather's house, who, you know, obviously has s- stuff that he's had forever. Yep. Um, I helped put so stuff we, in that storage unit. <laughs> true. So we, we have a storage unit and everything, and there was a lot of stuff that we had been holding on to to give uh, away to her sister when her sister got an apartment, mm-hmm. which just so happens to be now. Um, so Friday we went and pulled a bunch of stuff out to give to her. And then I'm pretty sure I pulled something in my back uh, to the point where yesterday morning I got up for work and I couldn't. I'm about to say, the way you described <sighs> it was you spent 30 minutes getting out of bed, trying to get out of bed, and then crumpled I, on the bathroom floor. I live, uh, my backyard is basically the ER entrance to our hospital. Uh, it took me 90 minutes to get to the hospital. Yeah. From getting out of bed <laughs> to getting in the car to getting there. Um, and yeah, you know, just majorly pinched nerve. They got me on a lot of drugs. I've done a lot of sleeping the last couple days. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it, it still hurts. Yeah. The, the painkillers they've given me, I genuinely can't tell if they've done anything because it doesn't feel like they have. (laughs) Um, but yeah, that's, that's my week. I've been in, you know, pain. It'll be fine. Um, it'll get better eventually, right? Maybe. Um, I somehow managed, after recording on Sunday, I somehow managed to get a sinus infection, uh, that Lovely. has been running its course all week. Uh, I currently can barely hear Carter through my headphones because awesome. my ears to don't To be fair, work. I was also, I was also kind of talking a little quiet there, so. I have you, uh, I have you turned yeah. all the way up in my headphones and on my computer and I can still barely hear you. So awesome. Love that. I, I, I told everybody at work. It's like, I am mostly deaf. So if you're trying to talk to me, I cannot hear you because it is loud back there. Um, yep. But I dealt with like, I had a low grade fever and I had a bunch of congestion and sinus drainage and my ears hurt. My throat hurt for like five days. Today's the first day since last Sunday night where I actually like, feel kind of normal other than the fact that i just can't hear anything Mm -hmm. uh on top of that i had to pretty much work every single day this week because we have nobody and so if anybody gets sick from bar at at my work it's because i had to work so get over it didn't have a choice well so getting a little more in on topic this week uh, after talking about our war stories for the week. Yeah. Um, our week one schedules for the draft league have come out. Yep. And I thought it would be a pretty decent idea to talk about, like, how we go about prepping for a draft league match. Um, what what goes into actually, uh, you know, deciding, okay, I have 12 Pokemon here. What six do I bring? Like, what do I, what should I prep for? What should I be prepared for? And as a result, like, what do, what six do I anticipate my opponent bringing? And therefore, what six do I need to be able to answer with mine? Yep. Is, is like, kind of the thought process for this week. Um, as a result, because you and I are both playing it, um, and don't really want to talk about, like, our specific matchups leading into the week, and not wanting to, uh, you know, pull just a random matchup and do it that way, because, again, then it gives kind of, like, an unfair advantage to both sides there of like hey here's tech that they could be bringing yeah and just like you know opening up that um i figured the easiest way to do this would be to just go through my rtt matchup this week um yeah it'd be it'd be pretty simple to do that and it, it's like I, yeah it's it, it's hopefully will help you know push me into where I can actually get a win this season. Um, but that's besides the point. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe maybe if we sit here and talk about it for an hour, you'll actually be, like, in a better spot and actually get a win, like, get a match win this week. 
So, uh, Jace, uh, you can stop listening to the video about now. Um, everything past this is not going to be relevant, so just yeah. don't listen to it. Thanks. <laughs> Here, here's the here's the big um, brain is we talk about stuff for an hour and like come up with something crazy and then just completely one eighty it and it does something and we do something else. I mean, there's a possibility, man. We could sit here and talk and then be like, I don't think this team is <laughs> like completely rebuild it over the course of the week. It is it is not the first time I've gone, man, I really like this, and the more I look at it, I go, This is terrible. What am I doing? <laughs> So, on screen, you can see Carter's team is in blue, and his opponent's team is in red. Um, Carter's RTT team consists of Honchcrow, Bramblegast, Electrode, Clodsire, Dreadnaw, Tropius, Hypno, Venomoth, Sligu, Impidimp, and Crocolore. Um, I'd, I'd also like to note that um, the sheet that you're seeing on screen is not something yeah, you no, made. This is... This is uh... This is is uh, it what Turbo is it Hawk called? Oh, it's Ball Hawk. Yes, Ball Hawks. Um, this is a a sheet I found on, I think it was one of the Smogon forums. Uh, if you just type in like, you know, uh, Pokemon Draft League prep sheet, this will this will be one that uh, is pretty popular and comes up. And uh, we'll we'll you know talk through it and talk about like what what you can do and everything. Uh, first things first is like make a copy of it so you can actually do stuff on yours. Um, there's multiple tabs down here in the bottom. The ones that we're going to be talking about a lot today is the matchup center. the The team tab is where you just literally put in your team and your opponent's team, and then it translates to the yeah. other pages. Um, what's great about this is this sheet has enough room to have ten different draft leagues. So. Like, right now, I have my RTT team, my LDL team, your LDL team, and then Casey's as well. And, like, with their respective matchups in it every week. So, like, you know, I, if you are a, a uh, like, long-time draft league player and you don't have something like this for prep, man, yeah, you're this, missing out. This thing helps out so yeah, much. Yeah, you sent me the link to this uh, just before we finished up drafts and whatnot. I'm like, this this tool's actually really cool. Like, I was like, I was using Showdown to kind of organize everything and keep my thoughts organized. And like, mm -hmm. this is this is dumb. I don't like this. And and that's that's what I do now is like a combination of put everything in the in the form. See, like, because you know, as we get into it, it'll show you like respective speed tiers. Um, your opponent's stats across the board, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, like, from there, it's just like, okay, uh, their fastest thing this week is base 105. I have a base 150. What's the 105 speed stat get to? So I know, like, how fast my team needs to be relatively. Yeah. Um, and so there's there's a lot of really, really cool pieces on, on this sheet. Um, once you move over to the matchup center, the first thing you see is just, like, basic information. It shows your team, your opponent's team, uh, the Pokemon's types and all the Pokemon's abilities, which is really important because it, you know it just keeps it really simple of like trying to keep track of everything all at once. Um, the next thing, if you scroll down, it is the sprites view. This is what I usually just like screenshot if I'm going to have it up on like screen to talk about or whatever. This is the like thing I screenshot mm -hmm. to share. It has your respective speed tiers on it as well, sorted by speed. Uh, the next one I think is probably the most important section, or at least one of. This is the type chart matchup. And down here on the bottom, it has all 17 types. Yep. Is that right? Um, a green box, a gray box, or a red box above those, indicating what uh, matchup, what, what types you have a positive and negative matchup into. So if it's a green box, you have more resistances than weaknesses. A gray box means they are tied, and a red box means that you have more weaknesses than resistances. So if you look here on my, my RTT team, uh, I am fairly weak to ice, ground, flying, and rock. Um, and if you've you know watched any of RTT this season, <laughs> you know that uh, Terra Ground has been my worst nightmare yeah. all season. So <laughs> it's, it's not been fun, man. I have gotten got by it, I think, literally every week. <laughs> But if you look over here at my opponents, uh, they are fairly weak to fighting, as well as rock is like the only two that have uh, more weaknesses than resistance. But stuff like fairy, they only have one weakness versus two resistance. So like you could say their team is fairly like you you have a decent matchup with like fairy type attacks into it. 
Um, and you know, there's there's a, a, like their rock weakness is two to one. It's like yeah, rock is still pretty good into their team. Same with like normal type moves, they have two resistances. But um, I think this is the thing I look at the most of just going okay. What is my opponent weak to? What kind of coverage should I really like? Just try to have more than yeah. normal with. I think is the, the simplest way to put it. Um, looking at this next section, this is your team stats section. You can sort uh, all all the Pokemon by whatever stat you would like: uh, HP, attack, defense, you know, whatever. Like speed is another one, but they have a whole speed comparison section here next below, which shows you. Every Pokemon at the highest speed, depending on what criteria you want to put in. Uh, so typically I do level 50, 252 I EVs, 31 IVs, no boost, positive nature. This tells you max speed. And then the next one I usually do min speed, uh, which is, you know, zero, zero, negative nature, mm -hmm. right? And so it'll show you, like, what kind of speed is, like, positive and negative into your opponent this week. So uh, mm -hmm. I have the fastest thing in the form of Electrode. I also have the slowest thing in the form of Claude Zire. So, just something to be aware yeah. of, right? Uh, this next section is the bulkiest section of this spread page. And it just talks about, like, what tools do each team have access to? Um, notably, this first section is hazards. Not something you see a lot of in doubles, but it is something I have ran multiple times in formats. Um, stuff where I'm just like, hey... I don't know what's going to hold a Focus Sash this week. There's a lot of things that could be holding it. I'm just going to put a layer, uh, you know, I'm going to put Stealth Rocks out there. Everything's going to take chip from it, and I'm not going to have to worry about any sashes whatsoever. That's something I've done, and it's been very yeah. successful. Um, so, like, for the most part, you can kind of ignore this section, like the hazard section, but it is important to note, be like, well, uh, my opponent has a Toxic Spike setter. That might be something I need to prep for. That's more for, you know, this is more for, like, singles stuff. Yeah. Right? Like, th that's definitely something that singles is more enticed by. Um, this next section is your healing section. It just shows you, like, what kind of Pokemon have access to, like, passing healing as, you know, with, like, Wish, Healing Wish, uh, Heal Bell, Aromatherapy, stuff like that. Again, can kind of be kind of important. Not, not usually for the most part. Um, Momentum is a huge one. This has stuff like U-Turn, Volt Switch... Uh, baton pass, stuff like that, that is very important. Um, the next one is priority. So it this is where you see stuff like fake out and faint and how many Pokemon have e access to each of those on each side. Um, you know, there's obviously like also Sucker Punch. There's all your priority moves are put into the one bracket. The The next section is called uh, titled Disruption. This is stuff where like taunt, knock, you know, anything that like prevents your opponent from doing something is usually listed here. This is like imprison, worry, seat, like anything that would change an ability. Uh, you have soak for changing types, trick, and switcheroo. You have encore, knockoff, stuff like that. Uh, this is a this is a tab that I use quite a bit as well. Being like, all right, what what do I need to be scared of of getting rid of my items this weekend with knockoff or trick or something mm -hmm. like that. The next section is trapping. Again, not very relevant. Um, not something I have used a lot, but it is important to note that it's still here. Uh, stuff like Whirlpool, Arena Trap, stuff like that. Next is Phasing. Uh, you know, this is where you have stuff that, like, either removes buffs in the form of, like, Haze, or forces them out in the form of, like, Roar and Dragon Tail. HP Cutting. This is stuff that is, like, static damage. So you have stuff like Pain Split, Endeavor, uh, Nightshade, Final Gambit, stuff like that. Next section is also very important. This is Status. Uh, this tells you everything that has access to some type of status move. From glare to yawn and everything in between. Um, and notably, I believe this uses national decks for like toxic purposes. Because if you look, um, my opponent has access to nine Pokemon with toxic, and I don't think that's accurate this generation. Yeah, no, the, most of those don't get toxic anymore. <laughs> okay, that's, that's again, something, something to just be aware of. Um, sometimes it's not 100% accurate. And, you know, you have the ability to set it to whatever format you're playing as well. Um, but I don't think you have a way of, like, updating the movesets of said Pokemon. I think it's all done automatically. Yeah. Next stat is also very important. This is Speed Control, uh, Trick Room, Tailwind, Icy Wind, Electro Web. You know, it Sticky Web is not on here, 
which I'm I'm interested by. Is it up in the hazard section? It is. Okay. So just just to be aware of that, like the sticky web is something I have ran, and it's cool mm-hmm. when it works. <clears throat> Um, next we have support. This is where your screens are, stuff like ally switch, helping hand, which everything this generation seems to get access yeah. to. Um, wide guard, quick guard, redirection in the form of rage powder, and follow me as well. Um, this, this next section, these next couple are, I can just lump together. This is weather and terrain. Anything that has a weather setting a- attack or weather ability is listed here. Same with terrain in the next section. Um, not not very relevant. Again, not fully up to date because it says that uh, Leafeon has access to Grassy Glide, which is not in the game. Yeah. So, cool. And then the last tab here is setup. Um, this is just like every decent setup move and like who has access to them. Um, stuff like Dragon Dance, Shell Smash, uh, Belly Drum, Coil. And then you have down here at the bottom is like attacks that are you know based on other stats or like a boosted ab- abilities. Uh, you have Power Trip. Store power body press down here at the bottom, so you can be aware of those as well. So, uh, that's a really, really super rough draft, like rough example of what all is on this sheet. Um, and this is basically your Bible. This explains basically everything you need to know about your matchup, all in one clean, concise. Yeah, for the most part. And it, it basically it is just interpreting the data that is here and implementing a strategy based on the data that is presented. Yeah, point. it makes it it makes it very that, readable for people who maybe this is their first draft league, and they might not be able to process everything, just like seeing Pokemon on a screen. So this this tool's yeah, very. I nice. mean, it, it's really hard to to go. Hey, here's twelve Pokemon. I don't know what to do. Like, what what do we do? Yeah, you know. And and this is really clean of just like, well, uh, my opponent has five things that are weak to ground attacks. I should probably load up on earthquakes and earth powers yep. this week. So, do you want to start maybe building an outline for what you're wanting to bring this week against your opponent? Yeah, I think I think this is a uh, a pretty good part to actually like talk about the team building process of like what you and I go through when we actually talk about team building here, right? Yeah. So, um, notably, my opponent is fairly weak to rock. This is something that you know they have two weaknesses to and one resistance. Um, But they also are fairly neutral to water as well, with one immunity in the form of Shellos, which has a hundred different ways we can deal with it. So I think Dreadnought is really good this week. And the question is, is like, how do I want to build Dreadnought? This is something you and I kind of talked about beforehand. Um, I have multiple rain setters on Mm -hmm. my team, but setting rain is kind of slow. So I think this might be a situation where we do like Shell Smash on on dreadnought because it'll allow me to potentially outspeed what my opponent has going on here with their fastest being 105 um base 74 will be able to get out of that range if i if i am faster than it the real question is is like what a, what item and what ability am i running i think strong shot is reasonable um i think shell armor is also okay i don't think swiss is like an option this week just because i don't think i need to devote the resources to having rain I agree with that. Um, in this situation, I think trying to set up rain is going to be harder just because you do have a fast way in the form of Electrode because Electrode obviously is going to outspeed everybody, but mm-hmm. they also just have no real care about you setting rain and kind of doing stuff like water sweeping stuff. Mm-hmm. So overall, I think what you're going to be looking for dreadnought is mainly just like that rock coverage. Yeah, I think I think rock coverage is really important. Uh, like I said, they have one resistance in the form of Don Fan, which just gets blown up by any water attack. Exactly. Right? Um, and also looking at this Terra Fire seems really interesting as well because it allows me to check my my weaknesses uh, in the form of like Leafeon. Uh, we get to then be able to check Fortress as well. And then, um, like, everything else that is resistant to fire, we line up well against as well. Uh, Terra Fire also means that I'm not going to be able to be burnt, which might be relevant. Um, um, I'm not sure if Willowis was a big priority on their team. I don't think it is. 
Let's see. Will o Wisp, they have it on literally no one. Okay, cool. So not not a huge deal. Like this is just like offensive terror yeah. in, in that case then. Which for the fact that they do have a Florgis and a Leafeon, um Terrifier is pretty good there. Um, also, because you are a water and rock type, you lose a lot of your like good water resistances and to, like to like steel, which Fortress can kind of abuse. I am still weak to ground. That might be something that like needs to be addressed. The the big but... ground check is going to be specifically Dawn Fan, which Dawn Fan is I you, you outspeed it. Uh, it is fairly defensively bulky. Um, mm-hmm. but I think a well-timed uh, one... water type attack plus whatever into it will probably pick it up pretty easily. Yeah. Fake out plus liquidation is probably good enough there. Um, opponent probably is not going to be worried about setting sun. That is something that might be of importance. They have a bunch of sunny day setters and like only one abuser in the form of Leaf Yawn. So the question then becomes is like, do they run Sunny Day just to weaken my water type stab? But that's why from... we're Terra Fire, right? Yeah, ex- right, right. Like, am I just like Shell Smash plus three attacks? Is this just like Shell Smash, Terra Blast, double stab? Probably. I don't hate it. Terra Blast seems pretty okay. Liquidation. Uh, do we want liquidation or or waterfall? Probably just liquidation. Liquidation right? doesn't have accuracy problems, right? No, it's hundred. Then just accurate. liquidation. It's 85, 85, 100. Yeah. Um, rock coverage. What do we want? Uh, you'll probably just have to run rock slide. Yeah, rock slide. There's also stone edge if we want single target. There's also rock blast if we want single target. Um. Um, but. Then I'm dealing with multiple accuracy checks or like uh, like damage rolls. The, that way. the just the having the sh- chance of flinching on rock slide is just too big. I agree. So then, uh, what item do we want? Is it they have an intimidator in the form of Stantler? Do I need to be clear amulet just so I'm not worried about that? You could probably get away with clear amulet. I, I think herb? your damage output on dreadnought is high enough as it is that you don't really need the extra oomph a lot of the time. But that would be where you start to do your calcs and start to figure out, okay, do I need mm-hmm. rain to do this? Do I need life orb to do this? Or choice band or whatever. I think clear amulet is probably fine for now. This is something to be aware of. Um, if we're doing that, we probably want some kind of redirection or like... Like a way of getting off a... Shell Smash seems important. So this could be Venomoth. This could also be like Impidimp for fake out I pressure. I think Venomoth is potentially fine. You just have to worry about Leafeon ignoring your Rage Powder and Safety Goggles being a that thing. That's very true. Uh, Impidimp um, lets you do fake out things or screens, depending on what you want to do with it. Um... The scary part about that is Covert Cloak's a thing. So you'll have to kind yep. of I... figure out where the yep. <laughs> where the uh, Covert Cloak's at. And once you figure that out, you can play around it accordingly. We could be Frisk Impidimp. That will let me see um, Covert Cloak before it's a problem. And, and, and or Goggles. Let me see Safety Goggles. Yeah. <clears throat> I actually don't hate both of them here. Um, we probably want to be Sash on Impidimp then, because like our bulk even with Eviolite is terrible. Yeah, like, Impidimp's always a 30, Sash 40. Bomb in this case. So we can be Frisk. Uh, we definitely want Fake Out. Could be like Sucker Punch was actually pretty useful for me last week. Could be T Wave as well. Without priority, with, have... like without Prankster, T Wave's a little. A little iffy, a little, a little more rough, yeah. Um, not married to Impidimp here. Like, with, with if we're doing Frisk, it seems really not mm-hmm. great. Like, fake out Sucker Punch is basically it. So our base fifty speed is not going to do us any no. favors. 
Um, so we could be prankster then, and then do thunder wave. We want screens. If you're going to be prankster, you probably want screens. Um, how are they slanted offensively? Do I need both screens? Or uh, they are line? very physically leaning, and they have okay special attack. Um, if if we're worried about physical, we could always run like Crocolore with Will O Wisp as well. Um, like in terms of Pokemon that have high special attack, they have things like Claw, a uh, high a physical attack. They have Cloth, Dawnfan, Electros, Leafeon, Zorark, Stantler. Uh, Cloister, Fortress, for that matter. Yeah, they are really, really physically offensive. They are they are all in on the offensive side of the ball. <laughs> mm -hmm. They've got very high attack They're and very seeking... high defense. Willow Wisp seems really good. I would say the fact that they don't have a strong way to deal with like a Crocolore outside of Cloister and or Donphan, both of which are probably doing physical things. Uh, Crocolore mm. is probably a, a decent bring this week, just because Willowis pressure is yeah. huge. Um, if Bramblegast had access to Willowis, I would say that would be a good one, but I don't think it gets access to it, even though it's a ghost type. Nope, he's lame. He's lame. He lame ghost it. type doesn't have access to Willowis. Yep. Um. Arm fort. But yeah, things like like Rage Powder plus Will O Wisp into their Dawn Fan or into their Electros or Leafeon or anything physical for that matter is is really is really really strong. The court, like so at this point we have definitely Dreadnought. The question is is like what form of redirection do we want? And it's probably Venomoth. Yeah. If we're Terra if we're Terra Fire on Dreadnought, we're pretty pretty okay. Um, because that gives us a resistance to forges as yep. well. As well as Leafeon, which I think is pretty important. And then we resist uh everything coming out from Cloister as well. Yeah, I, I, I think I think Terrifier is really good here. Um so we're Eevee Light on Crocolore just because our bulk is really mm -hmm. good. The question is, is like, what else do we want on this thing? Uh, probably some fire move. I've ran heat wave in the past. Could be flamethrower. I think I like flamethrower. Just the single target damage is kind of nice. Heat wave has, has accuracy problems. Anyway, that is true. Could be so. From there, we could do helping hand protect, and then just be like all in on. A one attack crocolore because i don't see this thing being like a offensive yeah no it is definitely speak. going to be a defensive threat um it doesn't get slack off does it oh you do, do. okay cool so like slack off protect will o wisp flamethrower is just like chef's kish perfect yeah that seems pretty all right a lot of bulk on that thing um so then probably so we have dreadnought crocolore probably venomoth at this point yeah Definitely Rage Powder, probably not Sleep Powder. Um, we probably want like Sludge I Bomb. know, I have Venonat really in the LDL League. Venonat has access to Compound Eyes. Venomoth doesn't, yes. does it? Correct, I have Shield Dust and Tinted That's right, Lens. you have Tinted Lens. And, and Wonder Skin. I don't even know what Wonder Skin does anymore. <laughs> uh, status moves have accuracy checks of 50% against oh. this Pokemon. So, looking at their team, uh, Tinted Lens mm -hmm. is kind of cool. Tinted Lens is really cool. Um, Tinted Lens allows you to hit a lot of their Pokemon for neutral damage. Uh, Venomoth also notably has game against Leafeon, uh, Zorark, and Florges. Yeah, like, Sludge Bomb plus probably Bug Buzz seems really good for coverage. Um. Yeah, like, I don't think we need Struggle Bug this week. I just don't think you need it. Yeah, especially the offensive. They have Zorark, Florges, Electros, Oricorio, which if they have Oricorio. I'm probably not staying with Venomoth yeah. anyway. Uh, we should uh, make note here that we, I believe we said the Oricorio in this draft league is any of them. I don't believe it's split up. 
So it could be me... fire, electric, yeah. ghost, or psychic. Which, of the Oricorio forms, I think ghost is probably the strongest, just because it has that immunity to fake out. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Do we want do we want like morning sun plus like lefties on Finamoth? We're not very bulky. Uh if you 70, 60, 75 is not awful. If you want to be that kind of recovery Pokemon, then yeah, that's probably fine. I think if you want to lean into some of your more offensive stats with this Pokemon. Could be Life Orb. Unironically, could be Life Orb. Like Finamoth. either Life Orb or Um I've lost the word. I'll think of it here in a minute. It'll come to me when I'm thinking about it, and it'll just pop in my head. Uh, but maybe specs. I think with rage, if you want rage powder, you don't play specs. That is true. I do think life orb is really um, good for this Pokemon. It's life orb, tinted lens, sludge bomb, and or bug buzz is probably going to do a lot of damage regardless. <laughs> yeah, I mean they have uh, one steel type in the form of fortress. That's their only poison immunity. Everything else takes, for the most I mean, outside of uh, Dawn Fan and Cloth, takes neutral or super effective damage from it. And so they have three resistances total. And with the way Tinted Lens is the one that uh, you resisted. Doubles, yeah, doubles uh, damage from non effect uh, from not very effective. So, damage. so it essentially hits all of them for almost for neutral. neutral. Yeah. Everything except for Fortress, exactly. Um, Bug, they do have three resistances, one of which is a two times resist in the form of Oracorio. But they also have two weaknesses in the form of Zorark and Leafeon as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't hate Life Orb. I think Life Orb's probably okay. And then uh, Rage Harder, Sludge Bomb, Bug Buzz, probably yeah. Protect in that Yeah, last I would just slot. play Protect the last slot. That way you can do support things, but you could also just turn on the gas if you get into a position where you need to deal damage. Notably, Leafeon is faster than, than Venomoth. It's base 95 versus base 90. It is something to be moderately concerned about. But like, even if they Terra away from their... Uh, poison and or bug weakness i'm still hitting them for yeah. neutral damage like you're gonna hit them for neutral regardless so it feels fine what do you think on terra type for this thing does it really matter i right wouldn't now? worry about it right away i'm not like i'm not worried about terra type on crocolore i don't think i'm ever tearing this thing it is purely support um okay where do we go from here so we've got a decent kind of offensive core with Dreadnought and Venomoth, and it got a kind of supporty thing with Crocolore. Um, I don't think this is a Sligu game because they do have that giant floor just kind of set in front of us. Um, yeah, doesn't seem great for us. I don't think we want to do electro things. Electric's kind of not a strong type into them either. That and electro elect electro just doesn't do electric type things. It's just kind of just like, here's all my support moves. Yeah. Um, what do we, what do we think of Bramble Ghast? So this is grass and ghost. You have to kind of worry about Zorark just sucker punching you down. Probably. Uh, Zorark and Stantler both get sucker punch. Does Stantler still get it. That's the real question. Um, they do not. Okay, so Stantler doesn't get it's sucker just punch. So it's Zorak. just Zora. Yeah. Uh, the big things for Bramblegast, Bramblegast hits Donphan, Bramblegast can hit uh, Cloth, Bramblegast can hit Cloyster, and the Shellos, that's probably not going to come to this game at all. Um, I know I know you kind of mentioned before, but Special Honchcrow doesn't seem terrible. I wonder if I could be, like, bulky Honchcrow. I'm really weak into Florges. Like, specifically, Florges and Electros. Hmm. It's interesting to think about. I don't... So I want, like, a special attacking Grass-type. How is, how is Tropius special attack? 
It's seventy two. It's technically higher than its attack. I'm about to say it. it it's seventy two versus sixty eight, and Bramblegast is eighty versus one fifteen. Bramblegast is how it's high special attack versus its one fifteen attack. Oh, okay, okay. I I thought you were saying it's one fifteen. No, 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 Good no. Bramblegast is Windrider all the way. It's gonna run things down with attack. Yep. Yep. Um. Okay, so looking at Tropius a little bit here, we get a Hurricane, we get Leaf Storm, obviously Terra Blast, Dragon Pulse, which doesn't line up particularly well against anything they've got going on. Um, like I, I just don't think Dragon coverage is ever what we're looking for. Terra fighting Tropius is interesting. We've become weak to Florches that way. Yeah. We don't have a good way of hitting Florges with this thing anyway, even if we were special. What about physical side? Honestly, you don't really have a good way of breaking through this Florges to begin with, outside of... Like Venomoth, right? Even then, Florges has such a high special defense. Yeah. This might be time for Claude Sire. I was about to say... Clot Sire might be our floor just answer. <laughs> Are we water absorbed? Um, we're really weak to cloister. I would say water absorbs probably fine. We could we could be unaware just to like on the chance that they are shell smash cloister. Yeah, you could do that. Um, Terra type on this thing we'll figure out later. This is probably still, like, Black Sludge and or Leftovers. I like Leftovers more than Black Sludge right now. Just because we're not locked in on a Terra type yet. True. Um, what about physical attacks? Poison Jab, I know for a fact. Earthquake, I know it's a good one. Um. We get Counter, does that do anything not for really, us? Not really, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, you would hit exactly Cloth for super effective and or Cloister. Oh, we get Waterfall. That's kind of cool. Waterfall doesn't seem terrible here. We also get uh, Trailblaze, but, like, I don't think Trailblaze Claude Zire is ever to play. <laughs> the Pokemon with 20 base speed. <laughs> Come on, we'll get there eventually. Um, I like... I like Poison Jab. I like... How's Bug Coverage looking to their team? Pretty okay. We could... Uh, poison Jab is probably enough. We don't need, like, Mega Horn nah. for Leafeon. Poison Jab is probably We'll plenty. just hit him with super effective stab. Yeah. Um, we get Liquidation and Waterfall. I like... I like Liquidation just because of the, defeat, the defense drop chance. Mm-hmm. It's also technically more powerful. Like, we're never gonna try to get a flinch with this thing. We're just too slow. How does Heavy Slam look? Uh, How heavy is Claude Sire? Claude Sire is a big boy. Is it big enough for Heavy Slam into Florges? 491. I have no clue if it's big enough for Florges. Let's see. Well, I mean, we have, like, Gunk Shot if we're going to go that route. Or Poison Jab. Um, I'm just trying to think if, like, Steel Coverage is even remotely important here. It hits Florges and it hits Cloth. Both of which we already hit it with Liquidation and Poison Jab. So probably don't need it. Um, we could do like Toxic and Protect as well. Toxic Recover. I think Recover is pretty good here. Just have to line it up right. Yeah. Poison Jab, Liquidation, Recover, Protect seems pretty okay. Question is, how do we build this EV wise? Could be especially defensive, I think. So, because, like, looking physically, physically defensive doesn't. Looking really at some numbers here, um, zero yeah. attack investment poison jab is a three hit KO into max defense, max HP, bold Florges. Okay. So, do with that what you will, probably. 
if you wanted to... It's not great. If you wanted to run Adamant, you can get it to a two-hit KO, or pretty close to it. Um, so this is zero attack, Clawzire into... Yeah, bold. Gunk Shot's a two-hit KO. Uh, at 220 attack investment with Adamant, Poison Jab is a two-hit KO. Into that max, max Florges. Yeah, it's always it's always a uh, two hit KO unless they are lefties and then it takes it down to about seventy five percent. We're never we're never okoing them with gunk shot unless we're like life orb, like life and orb terra roll. poison. Uh, actually, we don't even need a terra. Uh, if we're max attack gunk shot, we do eighty seven percent. To Oko. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we can. We have. uh, We have Liquidation to be able to punch through Fortress as well. I don't hate offensive plots. Heavy Slam doesn't Oko, but uh, Max Attack, Terra Steel. Uh, So, Heavy Slam's 120 base power, if you were just wondering. Against Fortress? Good lord. Um, How light is Florges? Florges isn't that big. Huh. Uh, so it's 77 to 91% damage with Terra Steel. Without the Terra Steel, Heavy Slam's a two hit KO at max attack. What does Florges have to hit Clodsire? Anything? Uh, nothing that I'm aware of. Should I even be worried about, like, being offensive? If I can just, like, sit in front of them and ignore them? Like, forever? looking at things that it could do... I think it gets access like, to Energy Ball? Uh, it gets Energy Ball, Giga Drain, Grass Knot. Which, Energy Ball's likely the, the strongest of the bunch. Uh, just throwing that in the calc here. Grass Knot at most it's... is a 7.1% chance to 4 hit KO. So this is... This is max HP, no special... Uh, four, 4 special defense, Clot Sire. Oh, see, I'm, I'm max special defense, 4 HP. Energy Ball's doing 20%. Uh, that was... I was doing calcs for Grass Knot, because Grass Knot technically is the more power. Oh, is it is it yeah. more damage? Because... Claude Sire's heavy. Yeah, it takes it from uh, a possible 5-hit KO to a pretty favorable 4-hit KO with Grass Knot. Which, if we Terra Poison, then uh, we make them sad. You could also do it with Terra Steel. Uh, Terra Poison takes Gunk Shot to be... Well, it actually takes Poison Jab to be a 50% KO. If we're adamant, if we're adamant life orb, which I don't think we want to be life orb because I think it's better on Venomoth. Yeah, I think life orb's better on Venomoth just to get that tinted lens bonus. Um, mm-hmm. I think for Claude Sire, maybe going ground. I don't think we need to be offensive. I think just like having having bulk and like shipping away at Florges is probably the best bet because like we're not worried about anything that they have going on against us. I'm interested. I think I think Claude Zire is just like the perfect answer for Forges. It just sits there and makes him sad. Yeah. Did Claude Sire get access to Body Press? We do. Yes. All right. Does that do anything for you? Body Press means we have favorable hits into specifically Stantlers, Zorark, and uh, Cloister, and Cloth. If they don't have a uh, fighting immunity, they don't have a ghost. Well. I don't they hate... could in the form of Oracorio, but oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know one hundred percent. So maybe looking into like poison jab, body press, because you don't really need the ground coverage specifically because you're not going to hit Electros with a ground type move anyway. Yeah, I agree. Um, body press actually seems really good into their team because 
If they're trying to intimidate down Claude Sire, I just body press the Stantler. Exactly. So the question is, is how much, how bulk is too much bulk? Uh, I would do max HP for sure. Yep. Uh, the question is, is, do I want special defense or physical defense? Probably physical. Your special defense is actually un- like fairly high, remember, right? Yeah, base 100. So you probably yeah. just invest in your two-year defense just to be as bulky as possible. Slap leftovers on it. Play probably uh, body press, poison jab, protect and recover or something. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I've that's what I've got pulled up now. Probably impish, just so we have that extra extra physical defense. Yeah, this actually seems pretty all right. We're just like a brick wall in front of basically their entire team. Just had to play smart and recover at the right yep. times. Uh, you said you want to kind of look into Bramble Gas some. Maybe, uh, maybe like I think I think Crass is like pretty okay into their team. Like they have, if they're Sap Sipper on Stantler, that means they're not intimidating my Dreadnought, or like they're not intimidating my team. Yeah. Um. Do we want to look into some kind of speed control against them? Maybe. Um, the question is, do we want, like, Trick Room Hypno, or do we want, like, Tailwind on Tropius? So, right now, um, with the way the team's kind of lining up, our fastest Pokemon mm-hmm. that we currently are bringing of, like, the four that we're kind of locked in on is 90 on Venomoth. Yep. So, as far as I know, outside of Stantler, they don't have another way to kind of set Trick Room. But they have a lot of ways to go um, fast. Scrolling down here to speed control, they have exactly trick room on or on uh Stantler. Does Stantler get imprisoned? Uh, I believe so. It does. They do. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, honestly, Hypno doesn't line up terribly against their team. Again, we need to kind of watch out for Zorark, but outside of that. Stantler kind of goes... I mean, uh, Hypno kind of goes pretty hard here. Yeah. We need to watch out for Fortress as well under Trick Room, but, like, we have Crocolore to fry it. The other option is to go Tailwind with either Tropius and or Honchkrow, which I'm kind of... If we go Tailwind, I kind of want to lean into Tropius a little bit. Tropius is really weird here, right? So, Tropius gets bopped by Cloyster... And is threatened by Oracorio, but on the backside, Tropius threatens uh, a lot. Uh, it threatens Leafeon, it threatens Cloth, it can threaten Cloyster, um, it threatens Dawn Fan. So you got a lot of options there with Tropius to kind of maybe pick up a couple cheeky KOs, depending on where, where the team is at at that point. We can go, like, Terra Ice on, on it as well, which then means, like, we turn our four times weakness into a resistance. Um, we do then become weak to steel on Fortress, but I don't think I'm really worried about that. You would also be still weak to fire from likely Zorark or Oracorio. Uh, Electros also gets Flamethrower. Hmm. Interesting. Really, really so it, interesting. So it's an interesting conversation to talk about this. Like, do we want to go slow or do we want to go fast? I, I do think some form of speed control is important here. The question is, is what kind? Um, Man, Electrode, I really wish you had Electroweb. I really do. <laughs> right? They took Electroweb from everything because we lost uh, Galvantula and Joltic. The Pokemon that could learn it by level up naturally. Mm-hmm. And it's no longer a TM. So it's just like, well, <laughs> if you can't breed with Mareep line or anything like that, you're just not going to get it. Yep. Uh, Hypno is fairly bulky. Um, Hypno does have pretty decent bulk, all things considered. It's good. Spe- it's got good special bulk, bulk, decent physical bulk. Um, can play that dazzling gleam. I think is what is is the fairy move it gets. Mm-hmm. So you can hit Zorark for super effective if you can find it, 
Um, I I really like Hypno here. Like even if we like, uh, we can also be inner focus. So then we are we can be like physical Hypno and be immune to intimidate as well. Do you get play rough? Uh, let's see. Physical. No, the only fairy coverage we get is D Gleam and Draining Kiss. Womp womp. Um, if we tear a fairy, how do we how do we look defensively into their team? Uh, tear a fairy is only weak to Fortress, um, because that's the only Pokemon they have that can hit that thing for super effective damage. Which we can always slap on Fire Punch on this thing as well, like incidental fire coverage on Hypno is not bad. We also get. I know we did at one point. Do we still get Meditate? Probably. No, oh, we don't. That sucks. Um, do we have any way of boosting our attack? Mm hmm. Interestingly, we get. Um. Let's see. Nope. That's that is uh guard swap. I want guard split we don't get womp womp man guard split would be so cool into their team yeah it's like make hypno so freaking bulky we do get encore hypnosis we get power uh power split which i don't think is very good here trick trick room we get trick and switcheroo all right I, I don't think that's very relevant, but it's a thing that exists. It's an option, sure. Um, so if we go lean towards the trick room option, I think the Frisk Impidip actually gets better. Yeah. Um, mainly do it as just Fake Out plus Sucker Punch plus whatever other support stuff you want you could do it frisk and kind of get some advantage that way um interestingly we get chilling water on impidimp that actually doesn't seem terrible into the, their like physical attack yeah just their very physical heavy team mm -hmm. oh. it may not be good but it's definitely a thing that exists i also get parting shot which like if we're doing uh slow impotent things which like we are um parting shot once trick room is up to bring in our our sweeper doesn't seem terrible yeah what is our what is our trick room sweeper though probably clot sire <laughs> i don't hate it i honestly don't think we need trick room here i think i think i'd rather try to just outpace them but i don't think that's gonna happen and I just, I don't think we have enough, like, good Trick Room Sweepers to actually warrant going that way. So either. then, if we're not going to underspeed them with Trick Room, and we're not going to try to tailwind them out of the game or get past them that way, uh, your best bet is probably just to outbulk them and attack their... Which I don't think is impossible, especially with, like, Claude Sire, Crocolore. Hypno is, like, fairly bulky as well. So it's like... Clot, Sire, Dreadnought, Crocolor, Hypno, Venomoth, uh, Impidimp with Prankster Screens. That would be what I would do then. So we can do... Let's see. Because then you could do like mm. Screens plus um, Parting. Interestingly, Hyp Hypno gets access to the Drain Punch. Yeah. Which is like more recovery. You could do like an assault vest hypno set. I was looking at either like lefties and then switching uh Cloud Sire back to Black Sludge. Or like Rocky Helmet also doesn't seem terrible. I think leaning really hard into uh your your special defense that's really high, just slapping assault vest on there and then max max HP, max attack or Investing really high into your defense and your attack and just kind of letting Assault Vest help you take the hits from the opposing uh, Zorark is 
probably beneficial because Zorark does have that base 120 special attack. Like, if there was something special that was going to hit you and hit you for super effective, it's going to be that Zorark. What does Terra Fighting do for us? Yeah, I know it makes us weak to Florges. Is that it? They don't have fly. Uh, they have oh, they Oracorio. have Oracorio for flying. Um, which, like, if they're Oracorio Ghost, they line up well into Hypno either yeah. way. Can't afford to Quiver Dance against the Oracorio team either. With Venomoth. no, can't do that. Can't can't risk that one. <laughs> um, so if we're if we're Terra fighting, we get Drain Punch, Fire Punch, Drain Punch. Um, other physical moves we get access to. Ice Punch, does that do anything? Probably not. Ice Punch lets you hit Don Fan, uh, some Oracorio, Leafeon. Um, Psycho Cut or Zen Headbutt? Are we willing to miss Zen Headbutt? Psycho Cut's got the higher crit rate, right? Yeah, whereas Zen Headbutt's a base 80-90 accuracy with a 20% chance to flinch. But again, I don't think we're really gonna like outpace him to try to get flinches. I think Psycho Cut's just a play. Yeah. We could we could do Trailblaze Hypno unironically. <laughs> that allows us to then outspeed them and like grass is actually a pretty good type coverage into their team. Yeah. Like unironically, uh Trailblaze Hypno doesn't seem terrible. They have Specifically, Oracorio and Fortress to resist it. Oh, and Leafeon. Mm -hmm. Which I have Fire Punch for Fortress and Leafeon. I could see this being fine. I think... I, I don't hate I like this. the the six. I don't... Like, the rest... We kind of ruled out the rest of them, like Sligu, Tropius, Honchkrow, Bramble, and Electrode kind of just all have to stay home. I think there might be an argument for Honchkrow, maybe. I think if you're not willing to play the outspeed game or underspeed game, you want that screens. I think you're probably right. Because I don't think they have any way to stop it. Um, I don't... Dawn fan doesn't get like brick break, does it? Uh, it might, but like, there's no it's way nice. for them to interact with impotent before it moves. True, they don't have uh, they don't have uh, prankster themselves out. They don't have prankster. They don't have fake out. There, there's nothing they can do to move first. Impotent is going to either set its screens, do its trick, or do its thunder wave. Like that. Uh, notably, Zorark gets Brick Break. Yeah. As does Electros. <laughs> Electros is weird. <laughs> Electros is There's so a reason weird, it's man. my mascot for my draft league team. <laughs> because you like it? Because it's weird. <laughs> and it's, one of, it's one of my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, light screen, reflect. And then do we want, like, Thunder Wave in our last slide, or do we want, like, Parting Shot? You don't get Scary Face, do you? I do. I think Scary Face is better. Uh, Parting Shot could also be fine. Our only, our only damaging attack is Fake Out. I actually like, I actually really like Parting Shot So, so you could cycle like, Fake Out? Parting Shots is, yeah, it seems really good. Um, and then for... I don't know, like, max attack, max HP, I guess? Yeah, probably. And just be, like, adamant. It's like, hope, make our fake outs do more. Yeah. Like, we're, we're never living multiple hits with Impidimp anyway, regardless of how we build this thing, right? Yeah. It's just priority like on making sure that you get to do stuff. Yep. Uh, notably, do you need to worry about Zorark with Impidimp? Yep. Um, but... I'm just going to click fake out and make them stop. Yeah, if you just click fake out, if you click Actually, fake out first, you'll figure out which one's a Zorark pretty quickly. I think I really like this six. 
the six seems really cohesive for, for what we're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I really hope people actually enjoyed this and like, you know, if, if you have feedback of like what you would do in this situation, you know, by all means, please leave them in the comments because I might actually use them if they're good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But with that, I think it's about time we get on out of here, bub. For sure. I did I did my draft league prep already for the week. I don't have to worry about You're that. You're so far ahead. You just get to I'm play Diablo so... 4 now. Oh, that's going to be the plan for the rest. Actually, that's not true. I'm probably going to go play Commander or something with one of my buddies. Um, my buddy Kyle came over last night, and we, we spent a while playing Pokemon uh, TCG. And uh, we... I put together, Tiff and I put together uh, the Darkrai V deck that top aided Fresno. Mm -hmm. And then we found a list for Tinkaton EX, which I'm just like, yeah, this card's awesome. I get to draw my deck every turn. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Tinkaton. Um, it's, it's your favorite Pokemon. We all it, know this. It does 30 damage times the number of cards you have in hand. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of nice. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, sure. Why not? And then uh, the other one we built is um, Night March. Which is it? Do you, I know do you what Night March is. Yes. Okay. I know what Night March is. Yes. Um, the problem with that is it's it's not Night March. It's United Wings now. Um, yeah. But their best attacker is like all of them are twenty times the number in your in your discard. So like at most you can only ever have twelve and use Ditto to copy the attack off of it. Um, which means at most you're only ever doing two forty, which there's. EXs and Vs and V stars they get to like three twenty. Yeah, it's and not enough. They look at you and you die. So Yeah. I think I think the deck is close to playable. I think they need like one more with like a thirty times damage, and then I think the deck is good. Yeah. Um it's it's really close to being good, but it's like right there on the front like it needs just one. It needs one more card. It just needs that little something yep. to be good again. But yeah, that's that's what we've been doing. And Kyle and I, uh, we stole a list for this Tinkaton deck online. And after playing a couple games, he's just like, "Nope, we we need to rebuild this." <laughs> so him and I like scoured the house for cards to try to fix this. And it actually came out. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with where the list is now. Um, we while while we were playing, Tiff was inputting code cards online. And so then afterwards, I just went through and uh, built everything online as well. So, <laughs> like, all right, cool. Now, and you know, she sat on her laptop and played TCG all uh, TCG Live all day. Mm -hmm. So, she's been uh, United United Wings is her deck that she really wants to play because she really likes one prize Pokemon decks mm -hmm. in a format where you know uh, two or three prizes are king. Being able to make them kill six of your Pokemon versus you killing two of theirs seems really appealing. Yeah. But yeah, so we've we've been on the TCG grind here lately. And it's been fun. It's been really enjoyable. Um I might put Lukia together tonight just to test it out. To be the bad guy. I, I have everything for it. Um so it's just like, well, do we want to? Not really. Are we going to? Yeah, probably. Gotta be the bad guy once in a while. Um I don't have we don't have everything for Mew, and I don't think we have everything for Lost Box, which I I have Lost Box built online. I'm not a fan of it. I don't really enjoy the way it plays. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's that's basically my my uh, feedback for Lost Box. Is if you enjoy <laughs> it, yeah, sure, man. Like, yeah, sure. For power, power to you, I guess. Yep. But that's my that's my plan for the rest of the night. Probably go get something to eat and uh, play. Some kind of card game. I'm going to edit this podcast episode and get it uploaded and then go to bed. <laughs> Woo. So, um, I think it's time to call it a night. What do you think? Agreed. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if this is something you enjoyed, you know, just a little more off the wall, just like talking, theory crafting and stuff like that, by all means, uh, please give us feedback. We, we would absolutely love to, to hear players' thoughts and everything on that, so... Um, as always, if you're listening over on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help us push our, our stuff against the, the algorithm and get more people to see it and all that good stuff. Um, it, it really does help. If you're listening on any of the audio-only platforms, make sure you leave us a five-star review. 
Uh, make sure you subscribe so you get new uh, notifications every Monday when new episodes go live. And uh, yeah, so you can always follow us over on Twitter at LR Lessons, myself at Mr. Missouri 25, Carl's at Musical VGC. Uh, you can also find us on Discord, where you know our community is awesome and great, and I love every single person there. Um, Draft League is in full swing. Week one is lined up, and you know I'm gonna go probably prep for a little bit of that tonight as well if we can. I will um, not. Be. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Make sure you follow us over on Twitter as well on uh, Twitch. Excuse me. Uh, that is at Mr. Missouri 25 and at Musical. Uh, check out the website, lrlessons.com. It's where you get access to our merch page while it's still up. I know I've been saying that for a while. It's because we're still working on stuff, I promise. Um, but yeah, go go and check it out. Uh, check out some of the articles we have up. And I'm sure we're going to have some more coming up here soon as well. Um, past that, you know, if you are interested in supporting the podcast financially, you can do so over at patreon.com. Uh, give a special shout out to our ten dollar and up patrons, including Johnny Bravo Senior and Papa Swish, and uh, you know you can always support us over on Discord as well, doing the Discord subscription service there. Uh, shout outs to our ten dollar uh, t- subscriber uh, Smeargle as well. So <laughs> I think that's gonna be it for this week, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and until next week, have a good one. Peace. <laughs>